All right, so today we're gonna do a quick video reviewing this Vivor uh, mini lathe. And actually, I bought it not really uh, expecting it to be super good. I just kind of wanted it to learn. I mean, I work at a machine shop, so I do know how to use machines like this, but I, I wanted to kind of just play around with essentially. Um, so it co costs $400, it's like 450 bucks off eBay. Um, you can buy it from more than just eBay, but that's where I purchased it from. Um, and actually, it's a pretty good tool. Let me explain to you where this like uh, has a, a niche, I guess. So, you know, if you work at a, I work at a machine shop. If you have a machine shop and you want to lay for your machine shop, you're going to be much better off going on like Facebook Marketplace and getting a used, much larger lathe. You can get a lathe four or five times this size for the same price. Now, to be used, not brand new, but you, know, you get what I'm trying to say. And it worked just fine, you know. But, you know, if you look at our shop and you look around, we don't have room for a lathe four or five times the size of that one, okay? So where this lathe really, really comes in handy is uh, for your, like, cramp for space. This thing weighs like nothing. I mean, I can, I can pick it up. You know, a, a, a lathe that you would get used is going to be a couple thousand pounds. No way that you could pick it up unless it was on wheels. You might be able to move it around, but it's, it's you know, that that's not very practical for our uses. And you might think, well... What in the world do you really need a lathe for when you're working at a, a car shop like this? You could just go to a machine shop like where you work and get stuff machined. Well, two problems with that. One, uh, in this town, there's not very many machine shops left. Ours, we actually sold our lathe recently because <laughs> we don't <laughs> use it that much. Uh, we use our crank grinder, grinder which is kind of like a lathe. But So, you know, if I wanted something turned at my shop, I can't anymore. And uh, if you wanted to go to another machine shop, there isn't one. So if I wanted to turn anything, I was going to have to buy a lathe. And where, you know, where would, why would you use that? Well, a good, just quick example, we bought a uh, dipstick tube for Tanner's truck uh, to use in his transmission. And when we got it, it was just a little bit too big. The metal insert with O-rings on it was just, it didn't fit. It did not fit in the particular 4L60 we had. Don't really know why, but it didn't. It was literally, it was just too big. So I took it over here to the lathe and I turned it down and it fit right in there. Now, if we didn't have this lathe, we would have had to probably wait a whole other week to do anything else on his car, just because of that one dipstick tube part messed up. Mm -hmm. So having stuff like this is very useful because if something's just a little bit off, I mean, not, you know, like it doesn't work at all, just a little bit off, you can fix it really quickly and get to the next step. Now, I mean, you're gonna say, well, your truck's still not done. Yeah, that's because of other stuff where tools that we wish we had, like a good example is a, is a lift. Mm -hmm. We probably would've been done by now if we had a lift. So that's why, you know, tools like this, you don't think you need them until you need them. Um, if you have a small car shop, I would highly recommend something like this. I think it's well worth the money. Um, I went and I got the little uh, the little bits like this. These are just from Harbor Freight, super cheap. They do not work super good on steel, but like aluminum, anything other than steel, they, they pretty much work perfect on. Um, I'm sure you could get nicer ones and maybe cut steel easier. But one problem with cutting steel on this thing is the, the adjustment things that basically adjust how tight this is. They're not super great, and really, if you use steel, it, it vibrates and chatters so much that the adjustments come loose. So that's not something that I would do with this machine. But it does have a lot of uh, interesting features that other lathes don't, too. So like a normal lathe, what you would do is you'd turn it on, and it all of the change in speeds, the change in um, direction of the lathe, and all that is done through a gearbox. So there's a motor that just does a constant RPM, and you change what gear you're in, and if you don't already have the gears set up in the way you need them, then you have to go in there and change all your gears. This lathe can do that, but what it also can do is it has a adjustable speed. So you can go as slow as you want or as fast as you want just by this little dial. Now, I'm sure some bigger lathes probably have this too, but none of the ones that you're going to find like for sale on Facebook are going to have that. So that's another interesting, you know, feature that it has that's a little bit different. Um, and you can reverse the direction right there real easy. Um, as you can see, too, we don't take care of this thing. Like, I don't, I don't take care of it. I, and, you know, people might judge me and say, you just don't take care of your tools. I don't. Because you know what my tools are made for? They're made for building things, not for looking pretty. This one handles it. Haven't, I, have not, I have not done one single bit of maintenance to this thing whatsoever. And it has worked for many months, no problem. Um, so, I mean, for 400 bucks, I think it's a good deal. Um, a lot of other people online will probably tell you the same thing. Just don't use it at a shop, like a machine shop that's meant for doing big metal parts. It's not going to hold up to that, obviously. 
you're gonna be better off getting the used bigger lathe for that so but that's what I think of it another quick thing to note um, this lathe is the exact same lathe they sell at Harbor Freight um, they sell a couple different sizes of Harbor Freight this is I think the little bit bigger size they sell but anyway it's the exact same lathe I'm sure they're probably just made in the exact same like sweatshop overseas uh, but they function exactly the same this one's just 400 like 450 dollars the one at Harbor Freight's like 800 bucks so if you're okay with waiting like you know I think it took this like uh, two weeks to get to my house then just buy that one because it's way cheaper and does the exact same thing <laughs> so This kind of stuff is just stuff that you never think you need until you do. I need one of these, one of, one of what I'm about to make for the shop anyway. Well, for a, a center punch. Yeah. For like making holes. Did you see that right there? I didn't even know I was in the process of making something we needed, but now that I did it, let's grab the little tool that I loosened. And you know, I didn't have to go buy a center punch now. I can go over here. see it in the video that good there's a little divot right there well especially when when i'm putting the fucking yep you can see it right there mm -hmm. yeah you can't really see it in the video but <laughs> like five minutes i just made a tool that we'll probably end up using a lot now mm -hmm. <laughs> so and that that would have been you know not expensive expensive but that would have been like 10 or 15 dollars we already have this random piece of steel laying around done so and here's another piece that I made on there. It was to, it's kind of rusty now because I only need to use it once, but it was just to like machine a cam gear, which you guys actually will be seeing what I use this tool for in a later video. Um, but stuff like that. I mean, you just never know you need it till you need it. <laughs> 